A slip roll is a machine designed to form thin sheet metal into curved panels or cylinders. It's a tool I've never owned before. Whenever I've wanted a cylinder, I've usually just found a piece of tube the right size, turned it from a bar, or bent a piece of sheet metal by hand around a suitable curved object, which works, but sometimes the results are less than perfect. Anyway, now I find myself wanting to make some matching cylinders, and a proper slip roll seems the only way. Initially I was just going to buy one. Hobby-sized ones online seem not very expensive, though I can't speak for the quality. Most seem able to roll a width up to 300mm, which is more than I need, but the thickness of material seems to be limited to only 1mm, or even less. I want to roll metal that is at least 3mm thick. I really couldn't find a machine with this capacity without going up to a very large and expensive industrial unit that I just don't have space for. So, I'll just build my own. If a small machine can roll 1mm thick by 300 wide, it can't be much harder to roll 3mm by 100 wide, can it? These are the basic parts of the frame. These parts will be the side plates and I need to machine them to take the rollers. There is a shallow key on the upper half of each side of the slot. This will retain the bearing block for the roller and allow it to slide up and down to alter the gap between the rollers. The bearing block will have a corresponding keyway on each side. The bottom half of the slot has no key so the bearing block can be inserted here.
These are the bearings I'm using for the rollers. They are sintered bronze bushings. This is a better choice than ball bearings since they take less space and can stand high loads. They don't feel oily to the touch, but they are actually porous and impregnated with oil, so they are self-lubricating. This size is 20mm outer diameter, 15mm inner diameter. The actual dimensions are both a bit over this. They are designed to press fit into a 20mm bore and still leave a small tolerance on the inside. The ID will crush down slightly as well. Here you can see oil that was forced out of the bushing by pressing it into the hole. The parts you saw me make so far are for the bottom pinch roller that moves up and down. The top roller is fixed in place, but the bearing on one side must be removable so that the roll material can be slipped off of the slip roll. This is the side plate the removable bearing will attach to. It will be held on with two bolts. Often, some sort of quick release clamp is used for this, but bolts will do for my use. The side plate for the other side is made in one piece. The gears and crank handle will go on this side. The side plates will be secured to the bottom plate with one large bolt in the centre and a dowel pin either side for alignment. The bolt will protrude into the opening and also be used as the screw for the thumb wheel to adjust the rollers. For the rollers, I'm using cold rolled steel bars. These are quite accurately round to start with, so I only need to turn down the ends to fit the bearings. The pinch rollers will also each have a gear attached to one end, and the top one will have the crank handle attached.
the gears and crank handle will be keyed to the ends of the shafts. The purpose of the gears is to keep the pinch rollers rotating together to feed the material through whilst also allowing the distance between the rollers to be varied to allow for different thicknesses of metal. Since gears have an involute tooth profile, the centre to centre distance can be altered and they will still rotate at a constant speed. The teeth just need to be big enough to allow for the range of adjustment required. The gears I made are 2.25 module with 13 teeth. They have a pitch circle diameter of 29.25 millimeters. The pinch rollers are 28 millimeters diameter. This means with the gears fully meshed together, the thinnest material I can roll is 1.25 millimeters. I can actually do slightly less than one millimeter as I cut the gear teeth a little bit deeper. The biggest gap I could have between the rollers before the gears no longer mesh is 5.5 millimeters, but then only the very tips of the teeth would be touching, which would cause a lot of stress and probably break them. So there needs to be a safety margin. For this reason, I made the adjusting screws so that it's only capable of going a little beyond three millimeters. What I have now is basically a miniature clothes mangle. To make it roll metal, I need to add the third roller. This will be supported on these brackets and will also be adjustable to change the diameter of the material being rolled.
I decided I would need to remove this thin web to give more space to remove the rolled material from the machine. The bearing is removed to slip the material off, but there isn't a lot of space. If I had used a spherical bearing at the other end, I'd be able to swing the roller out of the way to give more room. This would definitely be an upgrade. I was slightly worried that the two uprights would spring apart when I cut the web. But they didn't seem to move at all. The third roller is made in the same way as the other two, except that it's slightly larger diameter. It will be adjusted with two threaded rods. I want to make some ergonomic hand wheels for them. All that's left is to weld some feet to the bottom, then a quick paint job and it's finished. But will it actually do what it's supposed to do? I built it so that it can be either screwed to a bench or held in a vise. I'm starting with a piece of 1mm thick aluminium sheet. In order to avoid this straight part at the start, I flip the part round each pass. That was very easy, but what about 3mm thick sheet? Thank you. 
Well, that was quite hard work. A longer handle would make life easier, but it didn't take long to form it into an almost perfect cylinder. So, is it the best slip roll in the world? No, probably not. If I built it again, I might make a few changes, but it does do the job I built it for, and I really couldn't find anything else that seemed capable in this size or for an affordable price. If you're inspired to build something similar based on my design, I've uploaded drawings to Patreon which are available for free, no pledge required. See the link in the description below.